Hi, my name is Dr. James Field. I'm a senior clinical lecturer in restorative dentistry at Cardiff University. And I'm also an honorary consultant in prosthodontics. And here in the school, I also hold the position of the director of learning and teaching. I remember when I started dentistry, um, I went into practice for a short period and I got quite itchy feet and wanted to be doing other things. So I, I started to come back into the university environment to do some, some teaching and some, uh, some lecturing. And a position became available to allow me to, to take up um, a PhD. And this was at Newcastle University. So um, I worked as a clinical fellow, uh, which was uh, employed by the university to, to teach restorative dentistry and to also do some research. And over five years, that allowed me to start to get integrated with the school allowed me to start to understand what it was to be in the university environment and to teach. And also I was carrying out some research um, and specifically this was looking at uh, tooth surface loss and erosion in enamel. So over those five years, I became quite embedded in the school. And uh, once I'd finished my PhD, I took up a lecturer's position um, in restorative dentistry. And over the subsequent five years, I then carried out some specialty training in prosthodontics as well. So that was very much in a nutshell um, my trajectory to where I am today. So in relation to education, some of my activities when I was a clinical fellow meant that I began engaging with networks across Europe world about how we actually teach dentistry, how we teach clinical skills, for example, at dental school. And I also was carrying out research to do with erosion um, on teeth. So very much the areas that, that of research that interest me and still interest me going forwards are how we teach curriculum development, how we teach in the clinical skills environment, um, and also laboratory and clinical based research to do with tooth surface loss. When I started working as a clinical fellow, I didn't really have any idea at all about where my research interests might lie. And I think that's quite common uh, when, when I think back um, to, to my position then, and I speak to colleagues who are in that position now. But the, the beauty of the academic environment is that you're given a certain degree of freedom to try and find out where your interests do lie and where you might want your research to develop. So over time, I became more and more embedded um, within networks across Europe about teaching and history and other oral health professional programs. Um, and as I became more um, interactive with those groups and more engaging, I started to develop my own networks and put my own project teams together. So that's where my interest has largely grown, it's been a very much a catalyst for my research in that area to draw on these, these international networks. I've also found that the research that I was interested in in terms of tooth surface loss for my PhD has meant that um, as well as continuing to supervise research projects um, related to that topic, um, I've also been approached by industry and by other institutions and other organizations to help put together guidance and advice in relation to tooth surface loss and been invited to contribute to a number of book chapters and articles uh, relating to that topic as well. So once you start to be involved with a lot of these disciplines, then it tends to snowball quite a lot. And really, as long as you learn to say no to a number of things, you can be quite busy and certainly keep yourself busy in those disciplines. I would say the working week is incredibly varied. We have a structured timetable as, as academic staff, which tells us what we're meant to be doing each day on a, on a rolling basis, but the content of the sessions is, is incredibly varied. So um, I may spend a portion of my time at teaching our undergraduate or postgraduate students, either clinically or in the laboratories um, or online or in person. I may spend some time and putting together teaching material or liaising with our committees within the school um, and the school structures to certainly in my role as the director of learning and teaching to make sure that we're delivering excellent programs and i'll also spend a portion of my week um, doing some scholarship activities and some research which is where we look to develop the the better understanding of the subject and i also spend a portion of my week here in the dental school and dental hospital carrying out some nhs consultant duties in prosthodontics. And around the edges, we have lots of activities where we're engaging with international networks, 
committees, groups, organizations, specialty societies, where again, we're trying to push forward the boundaries of, of what we do within the discipline and how we teach it. The biggest challenge for me personally is to uh, organize the workload. And as an academic, it's an incredibly privileged position and that we have the ability to engage with lots of different projects as well as delivering the work we're meant to do here in the school. But the, the biggest challenge is juggling all of that work and making sure that you've got time to finish projects that you're starting um, and to make sure that you've also got some time to, to take on board more critical time related projects as they come along. I think that probably is the main challenge, time management. So the thing I enjoy most about my work is, is first of all, the variety with, with the activities that I carry out on a day-to-day -day basis. I very much enjoy networking, not just with colleagues here in the university, but also in the wider networks. That makes it a very enjoyable aspect of my job. Um, and I also enjoy the fact that we can make a difference, We're making a difference not just to how we teach students, trainees, um, but also a difference to the wider discipline as well. Um, and the impact that we can have on how teachers teach things within the discipline. So when I started as a, an academic, I, I think it's fair to say I, I got a lot of flack off my friends because they told me you're going to work in an ivory tower, you know, and there was a lot of, of probably incorrect assumptions about people who work in academia. And I think maybe that comes because people don't really understand necessarily what, what we do in our jobs on a day-to-day -day basis. They may think that really it's just about teaching and, and that's it. But I think really it's, it's about understanding the fact that when you're in an academic position, you're tasked with teaching people uh, with a balanced viewpoint. So we need to make sure that we're offering people a broad education that allows them and equips them to work professionally in, in any environment they might move to uh, afterwards after qualification. I very much remember how I was when I started my clinical academic career. Um, because of the nature of the hoops we've had to jump through to get to, to our undergraduate degrees and, and beyond, I think we always feel that we have to be accelerating towards the next step very quickly. And, and for me, that created a, a degree of anxiety. I wanted to know where I was going to be and when, and I always wanted the next, the next thing, the next goal to, to be achieved. And I think what I've learned over the last 10, 15 years is that you know, we are going to be in very long careers, hopefully, and we'll be working for a long time. And whilst we need to keep progressing um, towards our aims, there's no mad rush to get to the next um, particular threshold, if you like. And what is more important is that we're actually making the most of those opportunities as they come along. And what you realize when you finish each phase and you move on to the next is that um, perhaps there were more opportunities to make use of, of that time. For example, maybe research time or clinical training time. And it might seem at the time like these things go by very quickly. But my message there is there's no, there's no immediate rush. Just make the most of the opportunities as you're living. The impact that, that I think I made in my career is probably spread over different areas. Um, as academics and senior academics, we're forced to reflect quite often on, on where we have impact and to demonstrate that. So uh, when you ask the question immediately, uh, lots of things come to mind. But for me, I'd like to think that as a director of learning and teaching, I'm having a positive impact on the students that study um, in institutions where I've worked um, and at the moment here at Cardiff. But I also am aware of some of the curriculum work uh, which I've, I've led over the last few years. And, and maybe the most significant of that is in formulating a new European curriculum for dentistry and also leading the task force for a new European curriculum in dental hygiene. And, and those curricula are, are now widespread across Europe and they're utilized by a number of, of dental institutions to train their students. So I would like to think that that's one of the more impactful things that I've done in my career.